So now, nowadays, we find that Ibn Arabi is very controversial. Whereas if you go back to you know, Ferengi Mahal, the great Indian ulama, the vast majority of them would consider themselves to be followers of al-Sheikh al-Akbar. And there wasn't this sense of controversy attached to him. So what are, the, what are some of the issues? Well, people have this conception, well, uh, Ibn Arabi is teaching something called the unity of being. And this is very far from what it is, by the way, but what they say, the people who honestly, frankly, don't know at all what they're talking about, they say, well, he's saying that the whole world is God and everything's God and there's nothing but God and you know, everything's God and this uh, plug is God. and Hasha, uh, wakalla. Know. That's not what he says. Nothing like what he says. Nothing to do with what he says. Abaddon. Sheikh Al-Akbar does not say the world is God. What he says is the world has no reality except by the will of God and the continual imdad, the continual granting creation the constant renewal of its, of its existence. It's in Allah Ta'ala's grasp, as it were. That's what, well, you know, Lillah al Mathil Allah. But it's in Allah Ta'ala's grasp, as it were. Were you to grasp something, right? It stays, it stays with you as long as you're holding on to it. The moment you let go, it flies away. This world only has being because it's in Allah Ta'ala's grasp and it has no existence outside of that. And were he to let go, it would disappear entirely, right? It's only existing constantly dependent in every way on God, not only for its existence, but also for its nature, for what it is. It's nothing outside of him. But in no way means it is him. Or, or, or uh, there's an identity between God and the world, that God is the world, or the world is God. Mm. Absolute lies and falsehood, which have happened because many of the expressions of the Sufis are not made for people who don't have a large degree of background. And so if you go and read the works of the Sufis like a newspaper, then you will come to all sorts of totally mistaken conclusions. And so there, there are other issues um, which people ascribe to Ibn Arabi, which should be put down to realizing the mistake that is made that he says certain things that seem to contradict certain aspects of Aqidah. The mistake that people make is saying, oh, Shaykh al -Akbar teaches a different Aqidah. He doesn't. He teaches exactly the same Aqidah. Those are reports of his experiences that do not contradict the Aqidah. They constitute, they represent further detailings of the Aqidah, further dimensions of depth about the Aqidah. They never contradict the Aqidah, right? And they're not put forward as an alternative Aqidah. He's not saying, now you believe what you find here. He's saying, I experience this mashhad. I witness this reality. And people mistake that for him saying, you must believe something other than what you've been taught to believe, which is not the case. The Bataniya are a, a group of people who are agreed by everyone not even to be Muslims and those are people who say we only outwardly believe all of this stuff but what we inwardly believe is something completely different that's just for the awam, that's just for the normal people and so people make the accusation of Sheikh al -Akbar that he's a Batani absolutely not the case if you read the Futuhat al-Makiyah Allah yafzuqna qira'atuhu inshallah it is Pure Qur'an and Sunnah and the Prophet and uh, good advice and nasiha and wasaya and how to be a fully realized mu'min. That's what it's about. 
And it also contains asrar and secrets and hidden depths to reality, mostly, which are more, most fundamentally, hidden depths of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, which are hidden from most people. And so if we come judging them by our everyday life and saying, well, that sounds to me like it doesn't make sense of what I know, then we immediately do inkar on sh- of, of Ibn Arabi and say, well, he's a uh, hasha, far be it from him, he's a zindik or he's a heretic or he's a, all of these terrible things which only harm, sad, he doesn't care, I can promise you that, they, they only harm the, the person making the accusations. But yes, today we're in a situation because of our lack of knowledge, because of certain currents which have become dominant in our time, we tend to think of him as a controversial figure. I promise you, there are many phases of Islamic history where he's not remotely controversial. He's simply an imam, and people wouldn't hear a, 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 word, of, a word against him. One of them is in the time of Ibn Kamal, and he said, he was the Sheikh al-Islam of the Ottoman Empire, he said, I will not hear another word against Sheikh al-Akbar. In fact, anyone who says another word against Sheikh al-Akbar has to have a, a ta'aziyad punishment, because I won't put up with it anymore.